All right, we are talking about four steps to building good habits. Kind of building off our most recent chat about goal setting, let's get into the systems and habits that take us there. Peter, what is a habit you are working on right now? My habit is pressing three times a week so I can get to my press of body weight overhead. What about yourself? Okay, all right. Um, I'm working on my nutrition a little bit right now. Um, my main habit is that I'm doing a little Tuesday morning meal prep for all the food I bring to work during the week. Awesome. Yeah. Look forward to hearing more how that's going. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll touch back on those in a second. Let's start today um, by just laying out our objectives for the day. We're gonna define what a habit is, why we have them, and we're gonna discuss the four stages of every habit. We're gonna cover how to leverage those stages to build your desired habits, and how to adjust the plan if you don't nail it the first time around. And that's what we're gonna get into, let's do it. So let's start with what is a habit and why do we have them? Okay. Habits are the daily decisions that we make and actions that we take, many of which are subconscious. Okay. They allow us to automate things, saving us time and energy. If you had to consciously think about every single mm -hmm. thing that you did, you'd be exhausted all the time. Right? So yeah. habits are our way to get a whole lot, heck of a lot more done in our day. Right? Now, who you are is essentially a reflection of the habits that you have. Right? So if you are someone who has a messy room, it's because you don't have the habit of cleaning up. You have the habit of throwing your shirt on the ground as soon as you get home. Right? If you are someone who's super fit, it's probably because you've made it a habit to exercise, right? So they're, they're valuable. And what makes a habit good? All habits serve some purpose, right? You wouldn't do them, right? Smoking decreases stress. TV entertains you. The, the ice cream lights up your taste buds, right? Our brains evolved to prioritize short-term reward because for a while that was linked to a higher rate of survival and reproduction, right? Like sugar signified nutrient dense food. Hey, that I just found some fruit. That, that's fantastic, right? Sex led to reproduction, right? And you know, if you're surviving and reproducing, the species lives on. So those brains that kind of prioritize short-term reward, boom, that's, that's how the species evolved. In our modern day environment, however, <clears throat> short-term reward is easily accessible and is usually associated with worse long-term outcomes. And so a good habit basically refers to one that serves us well in the long run. Yeah. But it, just relying on motivation and just wanting it more for those uh, habits that serve us well in the long run usually doesn't work. The key is <clears throat> how do we make those habits appealing now? So let's talk about the four stages of every habit. Okay. First you have the cue. Okay. The cue is information that predicts a reward. Okay. You have a craving. A craving is a response to the cue and it's de a desire for the feeling that the reward gives. Three, the response, which is kind of the actual habit or action or thought uh, that results from the craving. And then number four is the reward that satisfies the craving and reinforces the loop. Okay, so again, tons of examples here. We're doing this all day. All day is like we're, we're kind of going through these steps. A really simple one is you're driving along and you're at a red light. Then all of a sudden the light turns green. That is your cue that, that predicts the reward of getting closer to your destination. You're, you crave getting closer to your destination, so you press the gas pedal, and the reward is you are now closer to your destination. All right, so even these really mundane actions, like, that doesn't count as a habit. Kyle driving at green lights, of course I'm gonna do that. But it does, like, that's, that's, that's why you do it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't just sit there at the green light because you want, you're, you're gonna follow these steps. All right. Credit to James Clear's Atomic Habits for this structure, just like we based the goal setting chat off that book and the structure that he lays out in that book. Um, this is also all kind of credit to his uh, structure uh, from that book as well. So again, highly, highly recommend that read. Um, so the question becomes, how knowing that these are the four stages we're going through, how do we use that to our advantage? So let's tackle each stage one at a time. The cue, make it obvious. Okay? That you want the cues for your good habits to be a very apparent to you. A couple ways you can do that. Number one, design your environment. You want to eat more fruit, have a fruit bowl on the table. So it's sitting there, easily accessible. Right? Do you want to read before bed? Leave your book bedside. Right? If you have to dig it out of a, a box every night, it's going to be less likely that you do it. Right? The book's right there to remind you that you want to read. Use habit stacking. Okay? This would be pairing your desired habit with one you already do. A favorite of mine here is that whenever I have a client who wants to get better at balance, I just tell them to brush their teeth on one leg because they're already going to brush their teeth, hopefully, at least twice a day. Mm -hmm. right? um, 
Lastly, use an implementation intention. Yeah, this basically means I will, you know, I will work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday before work, as opposed to just saying, I'm gonna work out three times this week. You know, being very clear about exactly when, exactly where you're gonna do the action uh, is another way of uh, kind of that cue more obvious to you. Peter, which of these are you using your, uh, your overhead press habit right now? Uh, a little bit of everything, actually. But um, when, when we moved the gym about a year ago, something that I have wanted to do was have a little home gym. Um, some for personal selfish reasons, some for my family and my kids as they get older. But there's so many times there's things that I want to do. Life gets in the way. I don't get it done. So being able to put one of my overhead pressing days on a weekend when I'm home um, and I have, I can implement it at some point during the day as opposed to going to the gym. That was making it a little more challenged when it's shoot 10 yards away, it makes it a whole lot easier to go there. So kind of changing my environment there. Um, and then of course, implementation, you know, being able to, on my calendar, I created a program. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what percent, here's what weight I'm using. Here's how many sets, here's how many reps. It's pretty easy to follow there. I did all the work a long time ago and away we go. Like what about it. yourself with your, your planning, your food? Yeah, no, a little bit of all of it, you know, design the environment. Um, I you know, do my grocery shopping Sunday nights generally, so all that stuff is ready for me for my Tuesday morning meal prep. Habit stacking, just right after breakfast, before I clean up breakfast, I do the meal prep, so I only have to do dishes once after. Um, and then the implementation intention is, hey, I'm, I'm doing this Tuesday mornings. That is, that's not, at some point this week, I'll find time to, to prep, and if I don't, if I miss a day or two, whatever, it's like, no, Tuesday morning, I prep enough to get till next Tuesday morning. Um, so let's move on. Make your cues obvious, okay? Number two, the craving. Make it very attractive, right? The same cue to two different people may, may not really uh, initiate a craving. Uh, in the book, I remember he says, you know, two different people walking into a casino. You know, a gambling addict, the slot machines are buzzing and there's energy at the tables. Oh, they, they now want to gamble. Someone else might be overstimulated and the cigarette smells gross and they just want to get out of there, right? So, hey, the cue is a cue, but hey, now you need to make that cue attractive to you so that it, uh, you know, sparks a craving, right? So ways you can do that. Learn more about the benefits of the habit that can make the, the habit more attractive to you to do. Um, you know, could be listening to a podcast where they, they talk about the benefits of it. Um, join a community where the desired habit is the normal habit. This one is huge. Now, we are social creatures. We, we like to feel like we belong. We don't like to be outcasts. So this is why, you know, gyms are often very helpful for people who want to, you know, be, join a community. Hey, joining the, our online training platform. Hey, you can see other people in the app logging your workouts. You're not the only weirdo in your family who works out. Like, there's other people out there like you, right? Um, Pick a version of the habit that excites you. Um, if you're trying to eat more veggies, start with veggies you enjoy. And that sounds very intuitive, but many times people are like, I should eat more veggies. I should eat more broccoli. Do you like broccoli? No, I hate broccoli. Well, why would you do that? Like they feel like they have to make it hard for themselves. No, you know, like pick, pick, pick the, the most exciting version of the habit um, for yourself. Peter, how are you doing this for your overhead press habit? We'll keep coming back to that. Yeah, um, it's something I've, always wanted to do. I've been very close at different times in my life, but I've never done it. And getting into more and more about health and longevity and being able to you know, thrive when I'm older, having the strength and putting in the strength, especially before I turn 50 is really important. So that's why I'm trying to drive and go for that. And um, it's something I, I'm, I look forward to generally there. So what about yourself? Uh, yeah, I did a nutrition certification, was that just last year? Might have been two years ago now, but I, you know, I learned a lot more about nutrition, made eating here more, more appealing. Um, I'm, I'm a part of a community where healthy uh, living is encouraged. I'm around other healthy eaters <laughs> like Mr. Peter. Um, I picked a version of the habit that excites me. I, I really like all those things uh, that, I'm, that I'm preparing. Um, and then I even had some blood work done that showed that, hey, I got some diabetes in my family history. Some of my blood sugar markers were higher than you'd expect for how healthy I was even eating before this. So it made me want to, you know, tighten the screws a little more, right? So this is a very attractive habit to me. I'm not dreading this, this meal prep. Um, the response, right? So you've got the, the obvious cue, the attractive craving. Now the response, make it easy. Make the habit that you're trying to do as easy as possible for yourself. What are the things you can do to do that? Reduce friction between you and the habit, right? So again, if I'm trying to read more and you don't have that book tucked away on, under in a shelf that's way up after you get the steps tool out, no, just have that book out and ready to read. And um, if you're working out at home, have your equipment accessible. Don't store your dumbbells in a box up on the top shelf of the garage. Like, <laughs> keep, keep them where you can use them. Master the decisive moment. Okay, so this means 
uh, make a decision now that will have outsized implications later, do that. A great one here is grocery shopping. If you can buy healthy food when you're grocery shopping, it gets a lot easier to eat healthy food during the week. You know, it's easier to have the willpower for that you know, 20, 30 minute stint in the grocery store than it is all week when you, because you bought all this junk and everything, well, I can't eat it, I can't eat it, I can't eat it. Yeah. Don't torture yourself, right? If you can master the decisive moment and just make healthy choices when you're shopping, now it's making it a lot easier to do it all week. And just a caveat there you, you hear too is like, don't go to the grocery store hungry because all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, you know, it's like I'm here. I have my plan. I've prepped it. I know what I'm buying. And those urges of those things of those temptations are going to be a lot less desirable. Um, and then use the two minute rule. There's a big one here that I use all, all the time with clients. You know, if you keep skipping your 10 minute mobility routine, try just a two minute routine. You know, just get in the groove of being consistent and then you can build on it. And often when you have a two minute routine, hey, all I need you to do is this one mobility drill. Mm -hmm. Usually once people start, they more often than not keep going. They probably do the 10 minutes anyways. But sometimes when you're sitting there on the couch, you got your TV show on, 10 minutes sounds like so much. Oh, I'll just get to that tomorrow. It's all good. Mm -hmm. But if it's just two minutes, I can just do two minutes, right? So just kind of like lower the threshold for what is uh, defined as success just so you can get in the groove of doing something and then build on it as you go, right? How are you doing this for your overhead press, Happy Peter? How are you making your response easy? So as, as we said, you know, I, I have a home gym, so that makes it easy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, kind of that, just even that, that two minute roll getting into there is when I first got the ball rolling, sometimes like literally doing some soft tissue work and all of a sudden getting some range back. It's like, oh, my shoulder feels better. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, versus if I just tried to jump in and just try to cram it in there, it was a lot harder. I did not look forward to it near as much. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Well, for, yeah, for the nutrition kind of, again, some of these things kind of blend uh, through these different categories mm -hmm. here, but again, the grocery shopping on Sunday, hey, now I don't have to grocery shop on Tuesday. It's like Tuesday morning, hey, the, the food's already there, it's available, so there, the friction between me and that, and then meal prep is reduced. Master the decisive moment, right? And if I, uh, the meal prep kind of is that, if I can just do this on Tuesday mornings, now all week it's easier to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where that meal prep habit kind of slides in if the, if the overall habit was just eat healthier. Um, and then the yeah, two minute rule again, kind of the same thing. Now, every single day after this, I just need to grab the stuff and go. Like that's now a sub two minute habit to eat healthy on the ensuing days because I took the time on this one day. Nice. Um, lastly, the reward. Okay, so you've got an obvious cue. You've got an attractive craving. You've got an easy response. Now can we get a satisfying reward? Okay. So basically use reinforcement. Create a reward for yourself if that habit isn't already inherently rewarding. Sometimes it is. If the habit's exercise, you generally feel better when you're done. So you might not need to go out of your way to add an additional satisfaction to it. Um, but if the habit isn't inherently rewarding, say like, say like eating your veggies. Yes, you will feel better once you get in the habit of eating your vegetables, but that first time you eat broccoli, if you, you, know, you might not like instantly feel like a superhero, right? So <laughs> how can you make that moment more satisfying yourself? Um, you might you know, pair it with, an, with a second reward. Just make sure that reward is in line with your desired identity. So don't go you know, bite a broccoli scoop of ice cream. It might be you know, bite a broccoli and then I have a bite of chicken because I like the chicken a lot, you know, and it's still something that is in line with my overall identity of, of eating healthier. Um, Use a habit tracker. I love this one a lot. Mm -hmm. And just seeing a string of check marks is surprisingly powerful. So if you have a, a habit tracker on, you know, post up on your fridge and you, you check the box every day that you get your serving of vegetables at dinner, and next thing you know, you see five check marks in a row. You're like, man, I'm, I'm really doing this. You know, I want to see more check marks. Um, so that often is a really powerful tool because with many of these, you know, good habits that benefit you in the long term, the results aren't immediately visible but but that string of check marks is immediately visible um, so whether that's again logging your workouts in your in your app on, on on train heroic right like just having some way to to see yourself um you know completing that habit consistently and then the results will come later on yeah for sure how are you doing this with your overhead press habit so as, as i mentioned earlier i have my my progressions all written out and then every time when i finish one i just highlight it in yellow mm -hmm. to show i know where i'm at i know what's upcoming and it's done and I can sometimes those days you're like, man, I don't make any progress. This sucks. And I look back and go, oh, I forgot where I started and where I am. That's been um, very rewarding to have in that up. Totally. What about yourself? Um, again, my habit is kind of inherently rewarding. I do just, I like eating all the things that I make. I like my yogurt. I like my smoothie. I like my, my veggie and fruit snacks. You know, I, I enjoy it all. Um, if I didn't, I'd 
pick different things to meal prep that still got me to where I wanted to go, right? And then I do occasionally track my nutrition uh, in various ways, whether I'm just tracking kind of rough, like kind of precision nutrition hand portions. Um, but, you know, doing some form of tracking is a, is a really helpful tool to make it like uh, exciting almost to and do. Um, it's what, what gets tracked gets modified is, mm-hmm. a, is a classic yeah. saying. So I think, you know, tracking with your nutrition, although it can be a little bit much for people to do all the time, is a very helpful tool. Um, okay, so what do you do now if it doesn't stick right away? Say you, okay, you set out, you, 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 you did your best to build your habit with an obvious cue, attractive craving, you know, easy response, satisfying reward, but it still didn't stick. Well, if you really did those things perfectly, it, it would have. So you just kind of need to go back to the drawing board and ask yourself, hey, did I forget? Yeah, sometimes that's the issue. Yeah, I just forgot. Okay, well, make it more obvious. Maybe you need to put a reminder in your phone or you just need to take some other extra step here so that you remember to do this habit. Okay. Did I remember, but I didn't want to? Okay, well, then I need to make it more attractive. Again, now you need to pick something I'm more excited about or I need to learn more about benefits of it. Um, I need to make that habit more appealing to me. Did I remember and want to, but it was just too difficult. I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the time. Make it easier. Again, maybe scale the habit down. Find a smaller version of that habit. Reduce friction between you and the habit. You know, make it easier for yourself. And then, did I do it? Did I go through all that? I, uh, did I remember? Did I want to? Did I complete the task? But then I didn't enjoy it enough to do it again. Well, then make it more satisfying. You know, again, start using that habit tracker. Give yourself some re- uh, so a reward in line with your identity. Uh, desired identity if the habit isn't inherently rewarding you know make it more satisfying so that you are you know motivated to complete that you know kind of feedback loop and do the habit over and over again so the answer still lies in the original blueprint here it's just kind of go back and hey where, where did things break down and then you know put a little more attention to that step of the process right. and, and for me I said I started my overhead pressing journey with a four time a week and around week week five week six uh, about a few weeks ago I found I wasn't desiring it as much. It was getting a little more challenging. It was still, I wasn't forgetting by any means. Sometimes it was just like guy on my shoulder. I was like, hey, for me. Um, but the challenge for me was again, it's just getting too difficult because my body was not recovering well enough with what I thought I could do. So when I modified it to three days a week, all of a sudden I was kind of back in a good flow. I was making the progress I wanted. I started to look forward to it more. So again, using the cue, not just ignoring them and I'm gonna push through anyway. What, what can I do? How can I modify it? To allow it to stick because you know I, I don't have us I didn't have to have it done by August 31st I have a lease there so um, I have some freedom to be able to modify it I'm gonna still get my goal just maybe not as quickly as I thought yeah oh. for me with the uh, the meal prep uh, yeah never forgetting uh, but I was originally doing it on Sunday nights or Monday mornings and sometimes after coming back from a weekend trip or I have to had a grocery shop that same day it was just a little bit too much and it felt like I don't want really to get to enjoy my weekend as much. So I got this all this 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 kind of all these errands to do on Sunday. Moving this one to Tuesday because I just realized, although you know, logically you would do it at the start of the week, but I can just make enough on Tuesday to last till next Tuesday. You know, where the week starts is kind of arbitrary. <laughs> um, I coach a little bit later. My day starts a little bit later on Tuesday, so then it became this almost peaceful ritual where I just had a podcast on. I was just kind of getting my day going, and I enjoyed it way more. So that for me made it easier and more attractive. To do. So. Um, again, this is something I do all the time with clients. Hey, what's what's your goal? Hey, what's our habit? Okay, boom, check in later. How's it going? If it broke down somewhere, what's the issue? Address it, repeat it again, and just keep at this process until you are doing whatever the heck you want to do. So, um, in summary, all habits serve a purpose, right? We want to make the habits that benefit us in the long term benefit us in the short term too. Yeah. Habits have a cue, a craving, response, and reward. You want to make your desired habits obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. If it doesn't stick, find the weak link in that chain, address it, and try again. There's no failure, only feedback is a line from uh, Precision Nutrition um, that we really like a lot. No failure, only feedback. Whenever you mess up, it's just information that you can use to make the next effort better. Uh, that second time around and yeah, just encourage yeah that out of the mantra just don't quit and there's there's feedback that's coming for a reason mm-hmm. utilize it and it's like oh okay that's right you know, I feel like parenting 
I'm learning this all the time, you know? And it's just like, okay, that didn't have the desired result. Let's try it this way. Let's try it this way until we find it. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Let's try something different. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna just stop. You're on your own, kid, you know? But it's just continuing to do that and living your life that way. And it's fun. There's so many little rewards along the way from the efforts that you put in just going. Yeah. Uh, a big theme of Atomic Habits is we, we we aspire to the levels of our goals, but we fall to the level of our systems, right? Mm-hmm. So again, there's going to be certain days where you're super motivated and you want to do all these things and you don't even need the structure. You're just going to go crush it that day. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, right? But most of the time, that's not going to be the case. And you need a system that's going to be there for you even on those days. This is that system. 